All right, this is a recording for the physics educational technology geometric optics that I have on the homework. And I didn't mean to do that recording actually because I want you to play around with that applet. So if you could look at the homework and follow the directions, that's really what it is about. I'm still making this recording because I noticed that as they switch from flash to um, HTML5 here, that was one of the last ones they did. In fact, they just did it. This is early 20, 2022, and they finally did that after a year. So it's back online, but you never know. So in any case, here's my recording. So geometric optics, and I'm pretty much following the instructions that I put into these homework questions. So it says, click on the lens. Then it says, and I wrote that, so it has a, some German accent to it. Move the object, probably a pencil is shown up a little, which allows the ray to be seen that passes through the center of the lens. So there we go, that's kind of what I'm doing, moving around. All right. Then move the object yet up further so that the bottom part of the object, that is the pencil's razor, touches the optical axis. So kind of like this here. And I'm not saying anything, you know, about how far it has to be. Just it has to be over here. It touches the optical axis. There we go. Um, one, some of the things we can see, for example, as the eraser is on the optical axis, so is the images eraser on the optical axis. Switch from marginal rays to many rays. So I'm going to do that right there. There we go. Click on second point. There we go. Whoa, that's a lot. Now, I'm actually going to make this bigger here. Move the slider for the diameter to its maximum. Should be 130 centimeters. I have some other piece of instruction in between. Actually, it's not. It's just a statement. Notice that all the light rays refract when they enter the lens and refract again when they exit the lens. So, for example, you can see that right here it enters the lens, refracts, it exits the lens right here and refracts again. That is correct. And you can see it on the white ones as well. It enters, refracts, it exits and refracts again. That is indeed correct. You will probably see a few ray diagrams, however, even in physics books, in which the rays bend in the middle of the lens for no reason. Um, that's actually wrong, um, but it's done for simplicity. In fact, if I go back to principle, I think it does that. Okay, I'm going to get rid of what happened to the menu. Oh, the second, I have the second point, that's why. Um, so here, look at the principle. In fact, I think they do that here. <laughs> And they used to just have it like that, I think. And they could have fixed that, you know, if they do the marginal ones here that actually are correct. Um, or the many, it's the many here that are actually correct. They could have done the other one as well. Fix that. Oh, well, oh, well. Um, of the many, and the, I think these are statements here from the homework question, of the many infinitely many rays that emerge from object, only a small number. See, the principal rays in the upcoming question statement are used when analyzing the image formation of an optical system so the task is manageable. When you look at this one here, lots and lots of rays, it's just an overkill. So when you look at a, an illustration, a diagram in a physics book, you usually just see that. You see the bottom of the object on the optical axis because then the image is also on the optical axis and then they go from the highest point here and they use these three principal rays, which I'll explain very soon, instead of using a multitude. And with that, you can actually figure out where the image is and then draw what's in between. And basically, that's what I say in a number of these statements as well. When the object's bottom touches the optical axis, the image bottom also touches the axis. Does if on now only if the rays emerging from the top of the object's, uh, object are used to get the image, everything else between the top and the bottom can be filled in in and so on so basically repeating myself making the need for a second point obsolete so i think i'm gonna yeah no longer click on that second point there um that is uncheck it it's not wrong to have it there but without it it makes the analysis either easier from the top of the object only rays of interest that actually pass through the lens from the top of the object only rays of interest are of interest that actually pass through the lens the, they come back together to form the objects image point and that's what we can see right there as they come back together and again I will explain them in very short very soon here that's the number of rays whittled down to the principal rays okay 
So click on principal rays, oh, which I did in the meantime. Only three rays show. The ray passing through the lens center is refracted on both surfaces in such a way that it exits on the same path as on which it had entered. So again, it should actually refract here and it should actually refract here, but they don't show that exactly in any case. It's as if it just goes straight down. That's what it's doing. And if you do a meticulous analysis with Snell's law on these surfaces, then you can find that's actually true. The center ray passes through as a straight non-bend ray. Okay, the ray being originally parallel to the optical axis refracts in such a way that it that after it exits the lens, it passes through the focal point on the other side. So this is the parallel one to the optical axis. And when it passes through the lens, it will actually pass through the focal point. And again, if you use Snell's law for that analysis, you would actually find out that that is correct. And then the other one is the ray passing originally through the focal point, then being refracted by the lens, that one becomes parallel to the optical axis. And that's why these pr three principal rays are easier to handle than all the others that you saw. All the others are were actually correct. So all of these here, they're actually correct, but um, the others are a little bit harder to, to handle than these three principal ones. And notice that they do come together here in one focal point, I'm sorry, in one image point that then would be the image of the pencil top here and everything else can be filled in. Uh, let's see, what else am I saying here in my homework question? These three ways converge to form the object's image point. There it is. Um, that's why paying attention to the behavior of the principal rays makes the analysis of image formation quite simple. Other rays can be used, but the analysis would be harder. All right, next one. Make sure that principal rays is checked. Decrease the radius of curvature to a minimum. So I'm going to do that. Radius of curvature to a minimum like this. Okay. Point, uh, 30 centimeters. Okay. The lens becomes thicker because smaller radius for the surfaces means that they bulge more. And the statement that I put here is now we can actually see a mistake the same as likely shown in the textbook it looks as if the rays are refracted in the middle of the lens yeah right there um i mentioned that already a couple of times and it looks really strange um but then do it for simplicity but that can't be true because in the middle of the lens it's it's solid glass and the light rail will follow a straight non-bent path instead the rays need to be refracted when entering on the first surface uh, um, according to Snell's laws, it passes from air to glass, then follows a straight line, straight non-bent path through the glass, then gets refracted again when exiting through the second surface. According to Snell's laws, it passes from glass into air. The outcome is the same, though. Admittedly, there's a very slight discrepancy. If the light rays are properly refracted at the surfaces, or if they're shown to improperly bend in the middle of the lens, they nevertheless converge at essentially the same image point, which would be, yeah, again, here, and if I make that curvature a little bit less, right there. So if you do one analysis here with that strange bending in the middle of the lens, or you do it um, the proper way on the surfaces, again, um, one is done for simplicity, and the other one would be the proper way of doing it. Either way, you get the same image point over here. That's basically what that means. Um, yeah, and then I say my last statement here for this particular one is that begs the question, though, why the proper ways and shown are used. The reason is that ray tracing is much simplified by using the middle of the lens as the bending point. When I do ray tracing on the board, I first use the middle, then erase the part inside the lens, and then make the rays properly reflect on the surfaces. So, yeah, actually, when I do that on the board, that, that's what I mean. I actually draw it exactly the way it is, and then I raise this part here in the middle of the lens, and then I connect the surfaces here. And then it looks like it is properly refracting. All right, let's see. Next thing to do. It was mentioned that there's essentially no difference in getting the correct image point, regardless of the proper refracting surfaces being used, or the improper but much easier middle of the lens ray tracing being used. Um, However, there's a slight discrepancy. Rays further away from the optical axis do actually not have the exact same focal point. We cannot see it in this applet, though, here. Um, 
um, that would be called spherical aberration. The discrepancy is small enough that it doesn't affect the correct image formation according to Snell's law and Gaussian's thin lens equation, um, especially not teaching the basic physics class. However, for high-end optical systems, microscopes, um, telescopes, and so on, aberrations need to be taken into account, photography, for example, and those are, I open a couple of um, other websites here, um, such as astigmatism, chromatic aberration, coma, distortion, field curvature, spherical aberration, and, and so on. And they're listed here as well. And if you look at this one here, optical aberration, you find a number of them. And yeah, optics can become quite complicated. And photographers know that if when they use really good cameras, they need to pay attention to these kinds of distortions. And that's why cameras High-end cameras are very expensive because they're made up of a multitude of, of lenses in order to get rid of these aberrations that are not wanted, but the optics is actually there and makes these aberrations, unfortunately. All right, let's see. Next thing to do here. Um, change the lens diameter. So I'm going to go back. Uh, change the lens diameter. So I'm going to do this here. It does not change the image formation or the image distance. Notice the image formation is the same. The image distance is the same by changing the diameter. Um, a larger lens makes it easier to see more rays, you know, kind of like this here or this here. Or if I use the, I think the many rays here, <laughs> notice only a few go through here, right? But if I lar use a larger lens, then more are going through. Um, go back to principal rays. A larger eye, so a larger lens makes an image brighter. This isn't simulated by this applet. Well, that's not longer, longer true because I updated this applet. Actually, it is shown here, and we can easily see that, yes, a larger, smaller lens makes it fainter, and a larger lens makes it smaller simply because more light is able to get through the lens and produce the image. So that is why photographers and astronomers use large lenses. So the former group, that's the photographers, may work in low light conditions, and the latter, as astronomers, I'm an astronomer too, works with faint celestial objects. So, yeah, that's why in astronomy, that's the main reason why we use either large lenses or large mirrors. All right, um, let's see. The combined here, change the radius of curvature. I did that earlier, right? The lens changes its shape and the focal length and the image distance. And there we go. Uh, change the index of refraction. There we go. Um, the focal length and the image distance change, and the applet changing. Oh yeah, the applet changing the color of the lens. That doesn't make sense, uh, but they just want to show. Hey, you're we're changing the index of refraction. You know, going from one kind of glass to another kind of glass. Um, that's a lens refractive property. That is, its focal length depends on the curvature radii of the two surfaces. So again, when I change the curvature here. The focal point changes or if I change the index of refraction then the focal point also changes so those together then produce what's called the lens maker equation and that's important when manufacturing lenses so I pulled this one up here I actually don't like this particular animation this is the lens maker equation the focal length is on the left here there's the index of refraction here are the two radii of the surfaces and that's what lens makers and manufacturers of lenses need in order to determine what kind of lens they're manufacturing and i actually like these still images better um, so different radii and different um, index of refraction and yeah produce a certain focal length all right um what else do I have here? After all this ray tracing using principal rays, here's an article from the physics teacher, April 2010. So I actually did find one. Can we trace that the article is, is named, can we trace arbitrary rays to locate an image formed by a thin lens? The article describes it is quite possible, but notice that it's harder to do. So what it means basically is when you use many of these here, you could actually use all of these here and produce them the image with all these here is just a little bit harder to do. And finally, um, there are no fat applets for concave lenses or concave and convex mirrors. No longer true because they updated it. There's the concave lens. Here is the concave mirror. Concave mirror, by the way, behaves the same as the convex lens. And then here is the convex mirror, which behaves in the same way 
as this one here, the concave lens actually. So they're actually there, and then there are plenty of, of other things or a number of other things such as GeoGebra. Um, there is a number of good applets out there. This one here, for example, change the lens, change the focal point of the lens, and you can see that the lens is getting thicker and so on. All right, that's the first part of the homework here. And again, I actually encourage you, I mean, of this particular homework question for the PhDT Geometric Optics applet, but I do encourage you to actually do it yourself with my instructions. All right, I'm going to make a pause, and then I'm going to continue with the next one. All right, so this is the next question on the homework. Again, I would really like you to do that on your own with this applet here, and I think the way I worded it in these homework questions is really straightforward. In fact, I'm going to read off of it, and then I'm doing the stuff on the applet that I wrote myself at some point. Okay, so this is the one where it starts out, measure as accurately as you can. You should get numbers that are either spot on or within plus minus two centimeters. The supplied ruler's accuracy. The ruler, by the way, is here, that one. Grab it in a moment. Obey significant figures, usually two, sometimes three, four, really long distances. And by the way, if you measure one thing or if you're like off by two centimeters or something, the homework should and will grade it correctly, all right? So, uh, first thing says, the object is at an object distance DO more than two times the focal length. So move the slider for the diameter to its maximum, should be 130 centimeters, so I'm gonna do that. So largest lens possible. So lots of light rays are going through. Move the slider for the index of refraction to 1.52, and this might be a little tough to do, so I'm gonna do this one here. There we go, that's a little better. Uh, move the slider for the radius of curvature to 81 centimeters. And, oh, there it is. That one's pretty cl close. Um, actually, and here it says marginal rays. It should say it's actually principal rays. That's a little bit easier. There we go, there we go. Um, grab the horizontal ruler. There it is. All right. You can also click on pencil and do all of the following with the lamp or the penguin, which I pronounce correctly. I will pronounce it the German way. So it's an I in there. Pinguin. This is a pinguin. There he is. Or she. Measure the focal length from the middle of the lens. So from the middle of the lens here, um, I could either put that zero here, measure over there, and it looks like 78 centimeters, or I could put the zero over here on the other focal point and then read it off right here, and it's still, either way, it says 78 centimeters. You can see this is 60, this is 80, this is 70, and then the little marks in between are two centimeters each. So 78 centimeters is what I'm reading off. And then it says in parentheses, this is pretty close to the curvature radius because a refractive index close to 1.5 entered into a lens maker equation yields a focal length that's almost the same as the curvature radius. And let me show that. I have that prepared here. So here is the lens maker equation with the radii and the um, index of refraction. And here's that example that I'm using now. So here's the 81. And then by the sign convention for the curvatures for the lens maker equation, because the radius for the second surface is measured from um, the other side, it attaches a negative to it, so negative 81 centimeters, and then here's the index of refraction for typical crown glass. Here, plug in these numbers into the lens maker equation. And what I mean by that is, notice, because the radii are the same except one of them is negative, Notice that minus negative, of course, is a positive, so you get kind of like a factor two right there. And now notice this parentheses here, because this number is so close to 1.5, this one comes out virtually to 0.5. So 0.5 times the two that you get here, because of the minus negative, you get actually two times one over 81. So two times 0.5 is one, and then you invert the 81. So focal length is 81 centimeters, and the reason why it's 78 centimeters rather than 81 centimeters is because it's not exactly 1.50, it's 1.52. But that's what I meant by that sentence that, hey, therefore you get a focal length that's virtually the same thing as the radius. All right. 
little side note and it took me a while to explain it right so let's see the next thing is also while the applet allows us to measure the focal length which i'm doing right here we would otherwise in real in a real optics experiment have to figure it out by measuring and computing the following so in a real experiment you don't see these focal points so in order to figure out where they are do you actually have to measure the object distances image distances and then calculate the focal length and that's exactly what we're going to do in this homework question position the object at the object distance 198 centimeters from the middle of the lens and that again is an arbitrary number so if this is 200 then this one here is 198 right there 98 and the penguin there is gonna be at zero and again I, can, I take the feet here on the optical axis that means the feet of the image are on the optical axis again and the principal rays from the head are over here on the image and everything else in between can be filled in so 198 centimeters measure the image distance so here we go and that looks to me like 128 centimeters so that's what i'm going to fill in there imagine that you didn't know the focal length of a lens which is the case when we use lens in an optic experiment we may have to we may have the manufacturer's value but we might as well measure and compute it again to confirm that value compute the focal length using the thin lens equation so I'm going to use the thin lens equation, which is 1 over focal length equals 1 over object distance plus 1 over image distance. So I'm going to do that 1 over object distance, that was the 198 that I said, plus 1 over 128, which is what I just said, uh, which, I, which is what I just measured. Parentheses, hit enter, and then because it's 1 over the focal length, I have to invert that again. And then it says, type all decimals from the calculator so I actually would type 77.7423 and so on and then it says round it to this much so then I would round it to 78 centimeters um, you could say well I did measure to three sig fig but you know my curvature of radius was 81 um, so two sig fig is sufficient here 78 centimeters which is exactly what I measured earlier for the focal length all right next thing to do leave the sliders oh the object is at an object distance of do equals two times the focal length then the instructions leave the sliders the way they are 130 centimeters 1.52 81 centimeters curvature use the horizontal ruler so same as what it was already here the focal length is the same as before yes so 78 centimeters position the object at a new object distance of two times the focal length so 156 centimeters so I'm gonna do that 156 I'll try to read that off that should be it pretty close at least so the feet of the penguin are right there uh, measure the image distance so I'm gonna take the ruler and measure the image distance and perhaps no surprise or maybe there's a surprise but the image distance right here comes out to be the same or virtually the same call it 156 or 157 centimeters uh, let's see what else does it say so measure the image distance that's the 156 or 157 compute the focal length using the thin lens equation um, type all decimals from the calculator and then round it to this much so I'm gonna do the thin lens equation parentheses 156 to the negative one it's the same thing as dividing into one plus image distance 156 to the negative one close the parentheses and then i might as well do it in one step here so again to the negative one and not surprisingly i come up with 78 centimeters both for the um and i type all decimals as well as for the rounded one Notice that this real image that can be projected onto a screen is inverted in the same size as the object, which is always the case for two times, for, for the um, object distance being two times the focal length. I think we can see it. And earlier I might have um, forgotten to say that if the object distance is more than twice the focal length, then the image is 
smaller and of course it is inverted all right so that's this part of that homework question all right and here's the next homework problem and once again i actually prefer that you do the upload yourself this is just my recording for this one so i had to prep this a little bit so i think i zoomed out a little bit because i need more space so the instructions are saying measure as accurately as you can and so on this time the object is at an object distance that is between the focal length and twice the focal length and then leave the sliders the way they were so diameter 130 centimeters and so on the focal length is still the same um, 78 centimeters as before position the object at a new object distance of 114 centimeters so look, let's see that looks like 114 right there close enough the feet therefore go at zero this is why I needed to zoom out because my image gets being pushed further out okay I think I pulled everything back into the recording here so you had the images way over there measure the image distance from the middle of the lens of course so there we go that almost maxes out the ruler actually and let's see 240 250 looks like 252 centimeters you know which part of the feet here i take it's it's hard to tell so i think i'll just take the 252 centimeters um compute the focal length using the thin lens equation so i'm gonna grab this one here clear this but i'm gonna go back to the last computation that I did this one here because now instead of retyping the whole thing I'm just going to use my new, new measurements I got 114 for the object distance right there and I just measured 252 for the new image distance there we go everything else is the same and I come up with this is what I type 78.4918 and so on and then I rounded to 78 centimeters which is exactly what it was before notice that this real image it can be projected onto a screen is inverted and larger than the object which is always the case for the object distance between the focal length and twice the focal length all right next thing the object is at an object distance that is less than the focal length so i would in a moment push it in here notice what is happening but before i do that i click on virtual image turns out virtual image actually was turned on all the time all right um leave the sliders the way they were so diameter 130 centimeters and so on the focal length is still the same 78 centimeters as before position the object at the focal point so i'm going to put it here right there at the focal point okay click on many rays so i'll do that there we go notice that all rays that pass through the lens exit parallel since they don't converge no image is being formed with the object at the full with the object oh yeah with the object being at the focal point yeah there is just no image this is kind of like the the blurry point that you that you would see so yeah no image there now i'm going to position the object closer to a new object distance 52 centimeters from the middle of the lens so closer here and then they still don't converge on the right hand side but i get that virtual image on the left hand side i'm going to go back to principal rays i think it says that yeah click on principal rays again and the construction here looks a little strange with the principal rays but it's the same thing so this one goes through the middle of the lens but we would have to extend it to the left then this one here is still parallel and as it goes to this focal point again we extend it to the left there it ends up and this one here this looks kind of funny like there is no lens up there uh, but imagine that our lens is actually that large remember we maxed out the diameter and so this one here um, comes from this focal point here and then becomes parallel and again we extend it to the left and on the left actually they converge on the on the right they all diverge but we get that virtual image on the left by the way virtual image cannot be projected and if you imagine that this one is <laughs> imagine okay we know that this one is the object so we put a lens in front of it and since we get the image behind it well there is no way to project that the image is behind the object you know the object is in the way so that that is another way of telling us that um that it cannot be projected so 
it's a virtual image. Okay, position the object at a new object distance. I still have to do that, actually, the exact number here, 52. There we go. And there are the feet of the penguin, and I guess that's actually a little bit out there, out of the picture. Oh, well, that's all right. Um, measure the image distance. So I'm going to measure it. So here to the feet of the penguin. That's right, I want to pronounce it German, penguin. So that looks like 135 centimeters right there. That's fine. So, in fact, it's a negative 135. From the middle of the lens, the distance is considered negative to this virtual image. Compute the focal length using the thin lens equation. So I'm going to do this one here. And again, I do second entry, and in the front here, my object distance right there should be 52. I'm too lazy to erase that there. And this new one, I just did that right, 135, and I will make a mistake on purpose, as this particular one should give me the focal length, which is obviously wrong. And so what, I, what was my mistake? Well, I said a moment ago, that the image distance now is a negative because it goes to that virtual image so as this one is a negative here i could simply subtract that second part there and okay that's a little bit large 84.57 i think you have to write that down again and then round it to 85 centimeters earlier i measured something that was closer looks like 135 to me i'm going to push this out a little bit here and again that was, was supposed to be at 52 right that looks actually correct, 52. Where are my feet? Oh, 138. Let's try 138. Second entry. Let's see what happens. Oh, a little closer, 83. Either one is fine. Um, let's see, what does it say? The focal length is still positive. After all, it's the same lens. If you compute a negative focal length or something else, like I did a moment ago, you must have made a mistake, but our 86 or 84 centimeters, or 83 centimeters, is either one is close enough. Um, notice that this virtual image is on the same side of the object, right side, by up, right side up and larger than the object, which is always the case for the object distance being within the focal length. The image is virtual, as it cannot be projected onto the screen. Notice that the image is behind the object. I explained that earlier. The lens is a simple magnifying glass, and the image can still be viewed because our own eyes... Uh, because our own eye lens makes a real image out of it and projects it onto the retina. So the virtual image, really, it's really not there. But if you imagine that our eye is on the right hand side here of the lens as we're looking through it we can see that virtual image and it is our own convex eye lens that is able to project it onto um, our retina and therefore we can actually see that virtual image again because we're using yet another um, convex lens that is able to project it all right and then for some reason i put here a quote from crown glass from wikipedia a concave lens of flint glass is commonly combined with a convex lens of crown glass to produce an achromatic doublet. The dispersions of the glass partially compensate for each other, producing reduced chromatic aberration compared to a singlet lens with the same focal length. Maybe I just like the quote here, talking about that for um, photographic lenses, for example. Um, yeah, I forgot why I put that in there. Other than that, it's kind of important. And there's one more homework question coming up, which actually is we'll be talking about flint glass. All right, good enough for this one. All right, and this is the next homework problem and the last one, I'm pretty sure here, for this particular applet. And again, I actually like you to do that. Okay, so again, it says measure as accurately as you can. Then this, the object is at an object distance that is um, about twice the focal length, but with a new index of refraction curvature. Move the slider for the diameter to its maximum, 130 centimeters. And now come the new values. Move the slider of the index of refraction to a new 1.67. So there we go. 
This is a typical value for a lens made out of flint glass. Notice that the image distance changes right away because the new index of refraction changed the focal length according to um, the lens maker equation. I think since I had a virtual image there, it even moved it out of the screen. So here's a real image here. Move the slider for the radius of curvature to a new 78 centimeters. So I'm going to do this one here. There we go. And same statement. Image distance changes right away because the new curvature radius changed the focal length according to the lens maker's equation. Measure the new focal length. So I'm going to do that. So it looks like I'm going to call it 59 centimeters. Position the object at the object distance 114 centimeters, which sounds like one I used before, but there's a point. Because now that image distance is actually in a different place than where it was before, because previously I used a different kind of lens. So position the object distance at 114 centimeters. Measure the image distance. Again, to the feet of the penguin. And it looks like 121, 120 centimeters. Notice that 120 centimeters is close to 114. Hence, we're, as we're close to twice the focal length, um, yeah, we get basically the same image size. In the meantime, by the way, I forgot what focal length I measured. This one here, 59. Oh, yeah, 59. And now my image distance is 120. Yeah. Okay. Compute the focal length using the thin lens equation. So here we go. And I'm going to clear this second entry. And over here, so I don't have to retype the whole thing. I'm just going to write over it. So 1 divided by 114 plus, I'm back to positive um, image distances, so 120 to a negative 1. Notice that the two numbers are really close to each other, so the focal length should be about half of that, around 60, and which is what it is. So I'm going to write down 58 point, yeah, type all the decimals from the calculator, 58.4615 and so on, and then round it to 58 centimeters, which I believe is what I read off anyway because I think I read off 59, right? Centimeters. Okay, so compute the focal length and so on. Notice that the image is virtually the same size as the object, but inverted, which is always the case for, well, when the object distance is twice the focal length. Use the lens maker's equation um, to compute the focal length. So I'm going to do that. And then this, this one I'm going to do in two steps. So it's open parentheses. One over focal length equals open parentheses index of refraction, which for this one is 1.67 minus a fixed one. Close the parentheses times in parentheses the curvature, and that would be 78 centimeters. So it's 1 divided by 78 plus 1 divided by, and here's the sign convention for curvature. So the other, the one convex side of the lens is measured from one side and the other um, convex um, curvature is measured from the other side so one of them ought to be negative if i don't do that um oh, oh there's a minus I, I forgot that oops there was actually a minus right here anyway oh that was actually a mistake there we go so if i don't do that if i don't put that second negative there then i would simply add i mean subtract the same number from itself and I come up with zero and I don't get anything and that would be the case for if you had a convex curvature on one side and the same concave curvature on the other side and you basically just have a window <laughs> instead of um, a convex or concave lens but here we have a double convex lens and yes one of them is considered negative and because it's a minus negative hence it's being added and we're just fine there and hit enter there we go and i need to invert that one more time because it says one over focal length and there we go 58.2089 i'm going to write that down i'm going to write it around it to 58 centimeters which is really close to the 59 that i had already measured so the lens maker 
if they want to have a 58 centimeter lens, focal length lens, then they would have to use this curvature here, the 78 centimeter, for this kind of flint glass of 1.67, and then they get that focal length. And that was basically it here. Uh, for some reason, I put here another quote again. Electric bulbs and spectral glasses are made of flint glass. And that was actually it then.